are in the industry. Hi, my name is Ted Mayer. I'm with Avalon Artist Group in Los Angeles. Um, we are based in LA and in New York. We also have an office in Atlanta. Uh, I am the head of the youth department at Avalon, so I represent kids and teenagers and some young adults under 25. Uh, I try to get them uh, opportunities to be in film, TV, commercials, and some print jobs too. Um, obviously in Hollywood, we focus more on film and TV, uh, whereas our New York office focuses more on theater acting on Broadway. And we have about 25 clients right now on Broadway. Um, how do I get started in this business? Well, there is no, well, at least when I was going to school, there was no degree to become a talent agent. Um, I did go to school to be in the entertainment business. Um, I got a degree, a uh, BFA in media arts for film and TV. I always knew I wanted to be in this business. Uh, I was a shy kid, so I wasn't going to be an actor. Um, but, uh, but I knew I wanted to be behind the scenes. So uh, when I first moved to LA after college, uh, I, I did everything. I mean, I did, uh, I was a PA on, on sets. I was working at a post-production house. I worked at MGM. I worked for producers. I worked on reality TV, did some casting, did some editing. Um, I even did a little acting. <laughs> um, I, I didn't, I wasn't purposely trying to do it. I just kind of got thrown into some, some scenes on some low budget films. So voila, I kind of had a little acting career started. Um, so I, as an agent now, I got to see what it was like to go on auditions and to go to acting classes and how it is to be an actor. Uh, it's very frightening. <laughs> it's, it's not, um, it's not easy. And, um, you know, the parts I did in some movies and, and a couple of things, I, I was just given the part. So it, there was no stress there. The whole audition process is a whole nother game, which I'll get into later. But um, I actually dabbled around in the entertainment business for four years and worked my way up to being a production coordinator on some movies. And one of the last movies I worked on was a, a Columbia Pictures movie called Can't Hardly Wait. And it was about a high school graduation party and uh, <clears throat> my job on a daily basis was to contact the agents and managers, let them know what scenes we're shooting the next day. And we had to change the script and change the sides for the next day. Sometimes we had, we'd go long or short and we had to rearrange some things because of the weather. So I dealt with agents and managers on a daily basis. And I also dealt with the actors because for whatever reason, they used to come to my desk um, in between shoots and takes and, and, and this, you know, shoot, shoot the business with me. And I really enjoyed the actors. Um, so at that point, you know, working in production is really exciting. It's fun, but you work 12 to 16. And as a production coordinator, sometimes I worked on a movie in Las Vegas where it sounds fun, but I worked 20 hour days. So <clears throat> it's, it takes a lot out of you. And, and it, don't get me wrong, it's a, it's a blast, but I didn't see myself doing that for the rest of my life. So after that job, I finally got a job at an agency um, called LA Talent, which is a pretty big you know, agency in LA Models, uh, working in commercials as an assistant. And I worked my way up and bounced around um, different agencies. I was a manager for a while, which we could get into a little bit later. Um, and 22 years later, here I am. You know, uh, I've been an agent and a manager for 22 years now. Typical day for an agent is there's a good probably eight hours, eight to 10 hours of research work constantly all day. And that's before even answering a phone or an email. So a typical day is, you know, we come in the office. Well, actually on the way in the office, I'm, you know, I have an hour commute to and from the office. So uh, I check my emails, see if there's anything urgent that happened overnight, anything that came in overnight I have to deal with. But as soon as I get the office, it's getting all the auditions, which are, there are a lot of self tapes now, is to look at all the self tapes that came in overnight that were due in the morning or due that day. Um, sometimes cast directors give out auditions overnight 
or early in the morning for the same day um, that we have to take care of right away. Those are urgent things. Obviously, if there's anyone on set that's having an issue, they show up to set, hey, this contract's not what it's supposed to be, or they want me to jump off a 10 story, you know, 20 story building and it wasn't, you know, in the contract or things like that. We take care of, uh, we, we say putting out fires. Yeah. So from like 10 in the morning, 9.30, 10 in the morning to about 11, 11.30 in the morning, we're putting out fires, we're getting all the auditions out, we're watching self tapes. <clears throat> now it leads us up to like midday. Um, and then all day, what we're doing is casting directors are sending us, you know, breakdowns of what they're casting, what they're looking for, what roles they're trying to cast for that show, that episode, or that day, or that commercial, um, or that movie or pilot. So we're constantly looking at the breakdowns and seeing what roles our, our clients fit. And so we're constantly submitting our clients. And if we see something that's spot on perfect for a client, you know what I mean? It's you know, they need to be uh, a good little actress who could sing and be a gymnast and could do a triple, you know, salt, somersault something while singing. I don't know, whatever. But if, you, if I see something that's perfect for my client, then we'll pick up the phone or shoot an email to the casting director. Hey, I look, I see you're casting this. I have someone perfect for this. Please take a look at my client. Um, otherwise, we're constantly submitting all day. And, it, and it's, you know, back when I first started this 22 years ago, we used to get faxes in the fax machine of what casting directors are looking for. And we'd look at it and go, okay. And then go on their wall and grab the headshots of the actors and put them in, put them in packets and, and then mail them or deliver them to the casting director so they could look at the headshots, which, you know, seems like ancient history now, but like, but now we're on the computer all day, clicking, clicking, and we have to be on top of it because if we're not, someone else is. You know what I mean? And these casting directors are seeing, I mean, if there's 200 agencies submitting and add another 300 managers submitting their clients to these casting directors, you know, for the role of, let's just say waitress number one, you know, they want a, a mid twenties, pretty girl, they're going to get five to 10,000 submissions of actresses for that one little role. So you don't think the casting director is going to sit there and they're re very busy too to look through all 10,000 submissions. They usually look at, you know, they, they could be looking at them right away, first come, first serve. Um, sometimes they, you know, pick what agencies they're looking at or they narrow them down on their end of like a specific look. You know, if they want a blonde hair, blue eyed, or they want brown eyes and blonde hair, or they want a red head or whatever, they narrow them down. So, but for an agent to get their clients in the mix, so to speak, we have to be on top of it. So. You know, we're constantly are not looking for distractions because we want to be every time a breakdown comes out, we want to be on top of it, submitting our people. So our day is basically doing that all day while trying to answer emails, be on the phone, you know, making making our coffee and running back to our desk. Um, so we're constantly doing it all day. So our, as an agent, my number one priority is to try to get my clients auditions. Because if you don't get auditions, then they can't, they can't work, right? And they can't book jobs unless they have an audition. And they can't, you know, book a job unless they get a callback. So that's on them. So it's a, it's a constant all-day thing trying to get kid, uh, our kids auditions. And the ones that do book, okay, now we, we hope to have people book every day. But it's not part of the plan. But when it happens... It's the best part of being an agent is getting that, you know, calling that client saying, hey, guess what? You booked it. But now it's a whole process of uh, negotiating the contract, making sure the logistics are right, uh, the timing's right with their schedule. Um, and we're constantly juggling people's schedules. So if I have an, you know, an actress <clears throat> who's on a TV series, but she books a movie, we have to be the you know middleman between the movie and the TV series to make sure her schedule works out. And all of this happens way ahead before she books it. You know what I mean? It, it happens while it's happening. We got to kind of juggle things. We always say, Ooh, I don't know. She's working on this show for this month. Is they're going to be able to do it? Oh, we just need her for one day. Okay. We'll figure it out when it happens. We, we call we carve it out. So it's constantly all day, just schedule juggling, trying to get her kids auditions. 
And then hopefully if people book, we're negotiating contracts. And <clears throat> sometimes it's a simple little one line part on a Nickelodeon show where the contract's pretty plain cut, simple, and we're excited to do it. And we, we, you know, we close it out right away. And sometimes it's a new series on Disney Plus and it's a new series regular role which is exciting because it's you know a big time job but it's also this big of a contract that we have to sift through and make sure we're all in agreement and we're all happy with the deal before we you know before it goes through and during pilot season you know there's a lot of opportunities but there's also a lot of bookings where it takes up a lot of my time um during the summer months when it's typically slow we have more time to be, you know, on the phone and chit chatting and things like that. So, but yeah, it, it's, it's constantly all day trying to, we're working all day, yeah. you know, um, even though sometimes people don't see the results of it right away. A lot of the stuff we do today on, on a daily basis shows up at an audition tomorrow, next week, even next month, that type of thing. Um, so it's, it's constant work. And then, and then you throw in, you know, managers who send us new clients or we go to showcases, we find new clients and we have to do interviews with them. Um, so we're just juggling all day, trying to get our current clients auditions. Um, and that's my number one priority. I pride myself on that. And then second is I'm always on the lookout for new talent. And if I find someone I think is great who could book, you know, a TV show or movie or commercial or something, I want to give some time during the day to interview them. So I could be working all day at the office. So I usually work to like seven, seven thirty, eight o'clock at night. Um, and then when I, when I get home, I try to, you know, rank it all off and watch TV, um, kind of digress. But before I go to bed, I give myself a good 30 minutes to look through my emails, see what came through during dinner time. Uh, before I have to go to bed, see if I have to take care of anything. Um, a lot of times negotiations happen in the middle of the night. It's, it's back and forth, back and forth through emails. So, so yeah, Monday through Friday, I'm, I'm constantly uh, working a lot. Um, and, and then you throw in the, you know, this is not on a daily thing, but then you throw in your client that is working on a set um, or is on a, a hit TV show <clears throat> that I'm a fan of. It just happened, uh, you know, about a month ago. <clears throat> well, actually two months ago now, gosh, time plus. Um, <laughs> Well, I had a client on, on what used to be Roseanne, and it's now called The Connors. And uh, I grew up to that show as a kid, as a teenager, um, watching that show, you know, most of my uh, young adult life. <clears throat> and to have that show come back and have one of my kids be on the show, you know, I went to go watch the taping and be on the set and everything. And it was so, so it, it's really rewarding and exciting, which makes this job really exciting. So. Um, yeah, on a daily basis, we're focused on getting our clients' auditions, uh, making sure our kids have their work permits up to date, that their um, their casting sites are up to date, that they're they're always growing, they're updating pictures, their sizes. It's an ongoing thing that's never stopping. So you talked about kind of how competitive it is, like 800 submissions for one job. So how does someone starting out get started in this industry? How do they start getting submitted? How do they um, get an agent, you're a new face? That's a, that's a very good question. Um, you, you don't need an agent right away to get started. Uh, you know, obviously it's very helpful to get an agent and this is what's great about CMTC is a great place to go and be discovered or find an agent or a manager. But don't be discouraged if you don't and you don't have to wait till 2021 to get started. You can get started now by doing local things. Um, you know, no one who was born with a resume, you have to build a resume and and you have to start somewhere. So I usually tell kids, um, you know, you start in school, whether it's your school play, uh, or if you, your, your school doesn't have plays, go to a community theater. Um, you know, there's a lot of local businesses too that do commercials. You know, it's like the dentist down the street or the local car wash or something like that. Um, you can go and, and try to see like, hey, you guys shoot commercials? I like to be a part of your commercial. Getting as much experience is, is really important. And then also obviously training. Um, 
And right now, if you don't have a, a, a school, a class in school or a community theater or anything like that, you know, you could look for one. They have them online now and you can take classes. But also there's this thing that kids have and use all day, every day called social media. And you could start your own YouTube page. You could, every kid's doing TikTok now. Um, where you learn to do editing and, and acting out different scenes and putting it together. So the resources are there for you to start, you know, training and building on and an acting career by either doing it yourself or going somewhere to get trained. So ultimately though, you want to go to CMTC to be discovered because as much as you want to do on your own, you get more opportunities with an agent or manager. But with that said, don't expect to just not do anything and just show up and be discovered. Mm -hmm. All the work you're putting in now until then is extremely important because this business is so competitive that if you come in and go, look, I have a YouTube channel and here's all, here's all the videos I've done with different uh, characters I could do. I could do comedy, I could do drama. You know, show me what you can do, um, <clears throat> whether it's TikTok or YouTube. Um, and, and then also too, just um, showcasing your talent and skills and, and learning. It's really important to learn. You know, everyone goes to school to learn. It's, you know, and, and it's the same thing with acting. So uh, to get started in this business, you know, you have the tools on your cell phone to really get started, but you gotta be uh, aggressive and going out there and finding places to get opportunities to learn how to act and act in classes um, <clears throat> or do your own content on your own um, social media. But it's really important that you, you get some experience because uh, when you come to CMTC, it'll show. It'll show that you're, you're confident and you're ready to do this. Um, but yeah, but to get back to your question, I mean, basically, to get started in this business before CMTC is just get as much experience and training as you possibly can from either home online or going to a class somewhere uh, in person. Since you primarily work with youth, do you have advice for parents whose children are just getting started as well um, for things like CMTC or even auditions and self-tapes? So parents are, yeah, are so important in this whole process because even though I take on the kid that I'm excited about, um, most of my communication has to be with who? The parent. The parent has to be really um, supportive of their child in doing this. <clears throat> and it's really important because I've had so many talented kids um, in my career that really lost out because their parents weren't behind them and supporting them um, didn't help them, you know, achieve what they needed to achieve to get them opportunities. So the process of getting auditions and booking jobs usually are probably going to start with a self tape. So it's really important that a parent um, understand that if you know their kid gets an audition on their own or through an agent or manager, that they're equipped to do self tapes from home. Um, and again, this goes back to you know doing things on your own for TikTok and YouTube and what have you. But this is a whole nother process that doesn't involve social media. This is your own home studio. So it's really important that you have a nice camera and, and cell phones these days are great. They're good enough uh, quality, which is what I'm doing this right now is on my cell phone. Um, my, my laptop camera is horrible. It's so dark. So anyways, but you could do uh, self tapes from home and, and you just got to be able to have proper lighting, uh, proper sound and proper equipment um, where you set up a background that has, you know, you don't, I mean, I don't know about me, but you set up a background that's plain, you know, no distractions. You don't want hardwood floors or, or tile floors where the sound echoes, you know, you want carpet so sound drains um, and good lighting. Um, <clears throat> but it's super important because when we get, like I said, it's a process getting an audition, but once you get one, um, you're now out of the, you know, whatever, 10,000 chosen, one of the 100 chosen out of 10,000 to get an audition. This is a great opportunity
to you know possibly book a job. So the self tape is really important. Um, so parents, it's you know it's uh, you got to be supportive of your kid. You got to help them out um, and through the whole process. And and parents, you have to understand that it's not just oh my kid wants to do this. Yeah, go do it. Um, you know it happens. It happens. No, you have to. You are part of the team. And and it's. And it's funny if you if you're represented by me, every email, every audition email is sent out to the parent and the kid if they have an email, if they have a manager, the manager, but also my assistants and my owner. I give, I say, you know, team Anessa, you got an audition tomorrow because it's a team. It's not just me. It's not just you. It's not just the kid. It's a team effort. Um, so the the kids and their parents, it's really important that we're all on the same page. You know, because it's not going to happen if we're not. And, um, you know, <clears throat> I have some kids, like I said, parents that are, are very supportive. They're right on top of it. Anything I ask for them to do, they take care of it. They do it. They get the tapes in way before the deadline. Um, and they do everything I say. And then there's some other kids whose parents, and I get it. You know, you guys have jobs and lives too. But that's something to consider during this process is if your kid's doing this, even though it seems like a, you know, a part-time thing, you know, until they land a, a, you know, something big or a TV series, it's, it's sort of a full-time thing. And whenever an audition comes in um, and they need it by tomorrow morning, this is not something you could just push off to the side for a week later or wait till the weekend. So you the parents have to be ready for this too. Sometimes these auditions, the parents have to read the other character offline and film it. So you don't have to be an actor, but you have to be there to help your kid um, succeed on these self tapes. Can you talk about the importance of photos and for youth especially updating those photos as they grow? Photos are very important and when someone's just starting out, we understand you may not have a professional photo, but again, like I said, the, the cell phone cameras, take pretty good pictures to get started. But when we work together, we want a professional photo. And that doesn't mean a selfie or, you know, something with, uh, uh, I don't know, what do you call those things? Um, filters. Filters, yeah, and just crazy rainbows and stars. I, we don't need that stuff, you know? And, and also too, <clears throat> it's really important that you get a professional photo done once you start working professionally because um, we could see the difference and it, and, it, and I get it like these cameras take good pictures and like I said when you start out if, especially if your kids four or five years old um, you know just a good snapshot photo is it's good enough to get started but eventually when you're working with agents and, and managers in the professional business and cast directors and producers and directors they're gonna want to see professional photos um, and even though you your snapshot looks good there is a difference. We can see the difference. And it's, you know, it may not be that big of a difference, but it makes a difference. And that means, you know, that the, the kid is in focus, the lighting's good, there's no distracting backgrounds. Um, and it's done, you can tell when it's done professionally. And when you get started, I understand, you know, taking a snapshot to get going. But once we start working together, I'm going to want a professional, you know, photo shoot done. And it doesn't have to be a thousand dollar photo shoot with 80 pictures, you know, depending on how many, um, how, or how old your kid is, you know, the younger they are, they're going to be updating their photos constantly because they're growing, growing and growing. You know, once you become 17, 18, 19 years old, you've kind of grown into the body or you're not going to change as much, but uh, you know, at six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, you're constantly growing. And obviously between 11 and 15, there's a big growth spurt there. So, <clears throat> So you're always going to be updating your photos, but we want professional photos because again, like I said earlier, if there's 10,000 submissions for, for one role, the cast director is going through and looking through a bunch of professional photos to choose from. And if your picture is not professional, it's not even going to be considered. Your kid's not going to be considered because, and it may not be a bad photo. It's just, it, it's just a subliminal message saying that, these kids take this seriously. If you take it seriously, you're going to get it professionally done, right? It's almost like 
adults, imagine if you're <clears throat> applying for a job, you know, you're not going to write your resume down in a piece of paper and then here's my resume. No, you're going to type it out and make it look nice and look good and professional, right? And that's what a photo is. It's basically, we say it's your first audition. So when a cast director is scrolling through the pictures, looking for someone to audition, if they don't see a professional photo, they're going to go right by it because there's a thousand other professional photos of kids they could choose from. So it's important to get a good professional photo. So it's really important that the pictures um, are taken professionally or always updated because the kids are always growing. Um, so, <clears throat> so if you're just starting, yeah, you want a good picture, maybe with your cell phone camera to kind of submit to people. But once you start working or you, you want to start auditioning, uh, whether it's for CMTC or for agents or managers, you're going to want to get a professional photo photo shoot done. It's all about first impressions, really. So even when you're electronically submitting and then also in person. So this kind of brings me to my next question for you. So what do you recommend somebody wearing for wardrobe as far as castings go or auditions or something like CMTC where it's a showcase? Your, um, your wardrobe for auditioning and for meetings and interviews. Um, again, I'm going to use this example of a grown up goes to a job interview. You're not going to be in your sweats. You know what I mean? Like even this call right now, I threw on a collared shirt. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not going to wear my hoodie, which I've been wearing for a lot lately. But, um, but yeah, the same thing. Anytime you're getting an audition or um, doing a self tape, or a meeting in person or taking your photos, it's really important that you wear something nice and professional. Um, <clears throat> especially for kids, what I feel like is really important are you know, bright colors, you know, co you know, something that kind of makes you pop. Um, also, you, you know, use colors that match your skin tone or your hair or your eyes, especially because if you have beautiful blue eyes, bright blues or greens, if you have green eyes, really make your eyes pop more. Can you give um, a, your last piece of advice for anyone attending CMTC or, and how to prepare or preparing at home? Yeah, I mean, basically what I'm looking for at CMTC and what most agents and managers and cast and directors are looking for um, and most professionals in this business is someone who loves this business, someone who wants to do it, someone who is confident and not, you know, someone who, because like I said, this business is so uh, competitive that we want to work with somebody who's excited to do this. We want someone who's willing to put in the work, um, but we also want someone who's not afraid to do this. You know, like I said, when I was a kid I was really shy so I didn't get an acting but this is not a shy business this is a business of people want to be on camera people want to entertain people who are talented so coming to CMTC my advice is to be ready to have fun be super confident um, do all the research you possibly can do um, do as much uh, education training for acting and if you're a model too, you get trained, you know, do research on what models, um, what agencies they're with and how they got there, things like that. Just be educated about the business and watching this is a good start. Um, but yeah, coming to CMTC is such a great experience. And you guys have to understand, like, it's hard to get in front of us. You know, I, in Hollywood, you know, there's 10 million people in LA and, you know, I get this interview maybe you know, a hundred kids in our office a year. So, um, you know, it's, it's hard, it's not easy. So to go to CMTC, to be able to perform in front of us, be able to meet with us and see us and get our, you know, advice and opinions, it's really, really um, amazing for you. So don't take it, you know, for granted, really, in, really prepare for coming to CMTC, be really ready and everything you want to do. Make sure your kid's excited to do this. They're really confident. Make sure you're prepared with different characters you're going to do for acting, um, your improv skills, uh, your wardrobe, 
and just come with a good attitude and just be ready to, to learn.